Welcome to my current sweater collection, at least the part of my sweater collection that has been hand knit. I will admit, while most of it is hand knit by me, I recently got a few pieces that are vintage and hand knit, though obviously not by me. But my sweater collection has grown substantially <laughs> and I really don't have space anymore. I think it's time for us to get a little bit into the sweater care and putting it away. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sort through my collection because I have some sweaters that are winter only. I want to pack them away into storage so they aren't using up as much room and I can kind of switch over to my spring and summer wardrobe. But first, let me kind of split out the piles of what I wanna to do to them. We start with this cardigan. I wore this one so much this past fall and winter and it needs a lot of TLC, but this will be packed away. But it is very warm, too warm for me to wear anymore. This cute sweater is one of my recent acquisitions, but it does need a little bit of care. So I'm gonna go ahead, wash and block it. So that's the wash, but keep out pile. My antiquity sweater, we're gonna wash and block it. This is my green leaf cardigan from the 40s that I knit. Wash, but stays out. We have my, I think they're called Rowemana sweaters. They definitely need care, but they're gonna be packed away for the summertime. This is my oldest sweater, my first ever sweater that I ever, ever knit, but that'll be packed away. This is the most recent little 1940s rainbow sweater that I knit. It needs a wash and a block. Ooh, look how much it grew. Cotton grows, doesn't it? Look at this cute knit skirt that I got. It does need a wash though. Same with this crochet skirt. It also needs a good wash. We have another very cheery sweater. I didn't knit this one. This is another vintage one. The two skirts as well, those are vintage ones. I didn't knit them or crochet them myself. All of this has gone through the freezing to rid it of anything that might destroy my own wool, but this still needs a wash and a block. This is another sweater. I've already worn this because I liked it so much, but I would like to wash it. And then the last sweater, this will definitely need a lot of, you know, those fuzz bits removed. So this is my put away for the winter pile. This is my keep for the spring pile, but both of these need to be de-pilled as well as washed, blocked, dried, and then put away. Let's start by removing some of the high worn areas and the pilling that built up there. What I like to use, it's called sweater stone. When you gently move this across your fabrics, of course you have to test it first on the sweaters that you have. It will remove the pilling that has built up from you. Some yarns pill more than others. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over first my winter pile with the sweater stone. satisfied with how that pilling removal process went. This is about how much I removed. I didn't want to go too hard. I don't want to degrade my sweaters too much. So now we are going to move on to washing them. I think I have to do them in batches because I just don't have a lot of space to let these lay flat and air dry. So I'm going to start with the winter sweaters because I think those are going to take a little bit longer to dry. I'm going to use the same thing to wash my wool and my cotton sweaters. I have to have like a mix of fibers. I know there are special special products for cleaning hand knits and especially wool hand knits. I don't personally use those. I just kind of use what I regularly have at home. So this is, you know, just a small bit of my usual laundry detergent. And then to that, I like to add some vinegar. I typically like to use white vinegar, but the store only had apple cider vinegar. So we're getting a little fancier today. So I'm gonna fill the tub up first, enough to cover my sweaters, mix this in, make sure to mix it all up. Not with the sweaters in it. I don't wanna agitate the water when the sweaters are in it. So I do all that before the sweaters are in and then I let them soak. Oh, and I use cold tap water or as cold as I can stand. Our tap water here, the cold is very cold. So I might, I might have it a little bit warm so I'm not freezing so much, but uh, yeah. Let's start my sweater bath. So my sweaters have been taking a lovely bath for the last good half hour or so and it is time to take them out. What I prefer to do to take them out to prevent felting as much as I can is 
First, open the drain, let the water drain fully, maybe give it five or so minutes while I squeeze on it every once in a while to let some water drain out. Then one by one, I'll take the sweaters out and gently wring them as I hold them up. And then I'm gonna do my towel burrito. So you roll it up into a towel and then gently step on it to squeeze as much water out of it as possible so that your sweaters will dry a little bit faster. And it also helps that you aren't rubbing any of the fibers together. I'm gonna try to find a large surface area then to lay the sweaters out and let them dry. Once all of that is done with this batch, I am going to repeat the process with my spring slash summer sweaters that I want to wash. Let's keep going with the drying process and uh, hopefully it won't take too, too long for all of my sweaters to be washed and dried. As we wait for my winter sweaters to dry, I thought I would maybe answer some questions that I think might be going across some of your minds right now. The first one is, do you really only ever wash your sweaters twice a year? And the answer is yes. That might make you question how hygienic is it or how clean is it? When I wear my sweaters, I try my best to wear a base layer or a foundation layer under them of like a tank top or a short sleeve shirt. Then when I am done wearing a sweater for a day or an evening, I will take it off, leave it inside out, and lay it out somewhere for it to like fully air out. Every once in a while, especially for the sweaters that I wear often, I'll put them through a freeze cycle. It is a little bit unique because if you live with anyone, sometimes they'll be looking for some snacks and find some wool in the freezer drawer instead. So that's what I do to maintain my sweaters throughout the year. And then the washing really happens to kind of clean them before I put them away for storage. So we are, I'm currently surrounded by the sweaters that are drying. I'm not gonna start the second load, basically the spring load until all of these dry fully because I do not have the room in this place to dry that many sweaters at once. The cold weather sweaters that are kind of strewn about the couch behind me, they are fully dry and I'm going to seal them up, but before I do so, I'm going to make myself some scent packets. I have these little cotton bags that I bought, as well as lavender and whole cloves. I went with these because I personally found them to be the most effective. So I'm gonna put just a pinch of cloves in each of these bags and a good amount of lavender. I feel like I'm gonna make a mess. I'm gonna try not to. Oh, yep, oh. <laughs> Maybe if I had a funnel, I'm gonna go grab a spoon and that'll probably help. So I have made as many sachets as my supplies would allow. I am going to add these to my winter sweaters and the rest of these I'm going to divide between my closet and my wool storage just to refresh kind of the protection that I have against them. I'm going to be using a vacuum storage bag to store my sweaters. It'll hopefully be more difficult for any kind of bugs or things to get into them and keep them also water safe in case we have any more leaks. We've had a few leaks already this year from the ceiling, so in case anything does come down, <laughs> they'll be better protected when they're sealed away in my vacuum seal bags. I guess let's go ahead and do the same wash to my spring slash summer sweaters. I also found something that I think will help me dry them a little bit quicker. It's coming in the mail and it should be delivered later today. While I wait for that to arrive in the mail, it's time to wash the warm weather sweaters, which happened in much the same way that I did my winter sweaters. However, I did wash most of them in the sink. I know that a lot of my sweaters that are smaller here, the colors tend to run a little bit, as well as having my vintage sweaters being washed and skirts, and I really want to make sure that I'm not accidentally making colors bleed and then <laughs> ruining the color of my sweaters. 
When the sweaters are washed and rinsed, I will once again use my burrito method to fold up my sweater in a towel and lightly stomp on it to drive out as much water as I can without agitating the fibers. I told you before that I was waiting for something to come in the mail and it did come and it's this multi-layer hang drying set, but I hope this is gonna work well, kind of allow a little bit more airflow through the top and bottom and that way I can dry eight sweaters in a much smaller footprint than kind of laying them on my couch in my bed and my floor. <laughs> Let's lay them out and hang them to dry. While we wait for my current knits to all dry, I had an idea for a fiber craft project to kind of fill a gap in my closet that I found. Here where I am, it is spring, but the evenings and some days are still quite chilly. And so I have been wanting to make a little bit of a knit vest. My friend was kind enough to gift me some vintage yarn and I absolutely love it. It's in this beautiful off green, like teal green color. Oh, I have chip remnants in here too, whoops. I sometimes use my yarn bowls as snack bowls. And I found a wonderful free 1940s vintage knitting pattern for a vest that uses kind of bulkier or chunkier yarn. I measured out the amount of yarn that I had and it wasn't quite, quite enough. So I found a nearly matching color. It is close in color, but it's not exactly a match. So what I decided to do was kind of start intermixing the two colors. And I think that this gives it some beautiful depth and dimensionality and I will have more than enough to finish this vest. Okay, let's get to knitting and waiting for my knits to dry. It is at this point that I unfortunately tested positive for COVID. I have been lucky enough to avoid getting it all these years now. And while I definitely did not feel great, I'm very thankful that I didn't have such a bad case because I've had all of my immunization shots and boosters. I had plenty of knitting to keep me busy, as well as Nutella, who is the best cuddliest companion to go through quarantine and isolation with. It is a few weeks later now and I am feeling so much better and I'm just excited to share with you the vintage vest which I managed to finish knitting as well as cleaning and washing all of my sweaters. It is so wonderful to be feeling better and back sharing some more vintage and historical knitting as well as hopefully some practical tips for you to take care of your own knits. I can't wait to keep sharing all the other things I have been working on in the meantime and I'll hopefully see you all again very very soon. Bye!